good to see you guys again. So, ever since I saw you guys last, I reorganized, kind of reorganized the project because I gave up on that whole making my own flight controller thing. It was a very, very good learning experience, but whatever I make, will not be as good as Pixhawk. Okay, but yeah, so I reorganized the project and we have five phases. I'm on phase one right now. It's been a year and a half. Here's phase one. It's getting the flight controller to start working, right? So for the flight controller, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use a Pixhawk. Let me grab my Pixhawk. Okay, we're gonna use a Pixhawk, right? We're gonna use a Pixhawk and we're gonna use a Raspberry Pi. Now these two things are gonna communicate with each other. It's gonna be like, yo, what's up? This guy's gonna respond back. I'm just living, what's up with you? I don't know, man, I'm going through divorce and everything. Stuff like that, you know? Two guys talking to each other. What Pixhawk is gonna do, best way to describe it is this is gonna do everything that has to do with flight. It, it keep the airplane in the air, keep it stable, to tell it to turn right, tell it to turn left, navigation, stuff like that. What this is gonna do is it's gonna control the mission. The Raspberry the Raspberry Pi is going to decide when to cut the cord. The Raspberry Pi is going to tell the Pixhawk, hey, let's run the return to home mission. Tell the Pixhawk, hey, let's go get some drinks. Let's talk about that divorce, you know, because times is hard. You got to look out for each other. That's the two, that's the relationship we have between these two guys. This, they're, they're together. In phase one, we're going to get this working, these two talking to each other. What we're also going to do is we're going to get a CNC hot wire foam cutter running. Uh, I've been making everything out of Dollar Tree foam board. Why don't I just make a normal hot wire foam cutter? Because I got things to do, man. I got kids to feed. I got bills to pay. So I'll let the CNC, the hot wire foam cutter, cut the thing out, right? I already got my, uh, what are these things called? Stepper motors. I already got these. Okay. Whew. I already got my stepper motors and everything. So we're, that's a, that's a thing. It's going to happen. All right. Okay, would you rather be trapped in an elevator with your ex or your t Good day today. So my hair's still growing, which means the project is still ongoing. Because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not cutting my hair until the project finishes. What we're going to do here is, obviously, uh, Dollar Tree foam board isn't going to cut it anymore. If the plane can fly that fast, if it can withstand the wind speeds, if it can withstand etc. Uh, there was a team, I think, that did a 10 kilometer. Uh, altitude return and their airplane went up to 200 miles an hour in airspeed so um, it's gonna have to be able to withstand all that we're gonna make the we're gonna make the aircraft out of EPP we got a whole shopping list to fill out so it's we actually just need two of those never mind Okay, so here's a problem that I didn't realize that I was gonna have. I got my pieces of wood, right? Here's my method of transportation. All right, here's how, the, here's how this is gonna work. Man, I can already hear the haters, man. Telling me, yo, Tark, don't do this to yourself, Tark. You have a long life to live. And you know what I tell them? Yeah? That's the difference. That's the difference, man. All right, now this is not gonna work. Hold on. So you can tell the tell the aircraft to run navigation missions and see how it works out, see how autonomous everything is, and see if uh, the way that you think the program is gonna run runs properly. So that's gazebo. That's what I'm planning on using gazebo for. And then on Phase three, we're gonna have X-Plane, which we're gonna use simulations all the way up at 100,000 feet. That's the, to see if, you know, like our aircraft model is gonna work properly, what the vibrations are up there. I don't know what kind of information X-Plane gives us, but I've heard that X-Plane is very, very realistic. Maybe not very, very realistic, but I've heard that X-Plane is very realistic. Maybe I should just go with X-Plane's pretty realistic. It's as good as it gets. So we're, we'll run with X-Plane after that. How does Gazebo, the whole flight simulator thing work? Let's explain it like this. When you're flying a normal aircraft with Pixhawk, the Pixhawk gives input, uh, outputs to the servos and whatnot, and that moves the aircraft, and that gives inputs via the accelerometers, IMUs, the other sensors on board. This right here is what's giving the inputs to Pixhawk. So Pixhawk tells these motors to turn on. This simulation world runs it through physics engines, equations, and so on and so forth, and gives outputs or inputs 
into the PixHawk, and the PixHawk uses them as acceleration or sensor data. And then that's, that's your loop right there. There's two types of loops that we can use. There's hardware in the loop and there's software in the loop, SITL or HITL. Software in the loop, there's no PixHawk connected. It just uses the PixHawk flight stack, which is just the software of the PixHawk, and runs it and compiles everything on the computer. Hardware in the loop, that's just off the computer, it runs it on the actual PixHawk. That's more accurate because it's the actual PixHawk that's doing all the calculations instead of your computer. Now how ROS works, let's, let's define it like this. ROS has different topics, subscribers, publishers. Now you organize all your topics out. One topic could be, say you're in a car, you're driving down a car, you have a topic that's your odometer that gives you your speed, another topic that's your rev, gives you your engine RPMs so on and so forth. When a subscriber subscribes to a topic, they receive data in the form of messages. But yeah, so that, that's what topics do. And if you want to take data from a topic, the topic uh, publishes or sends out a message, and in that message you have the data. An odometer topic would send a message that has your speed in it, in miles per hour or in vector data if you're translating in a three-dimensional space. So that's how ROS works. We're going to be using all that to create kind of our own program but what we're going to be using for ROS for is very basic from what I'm seeing right now. That's all I have for this video. Uh, I, and I know it's not a lot, but I want to make videos more frequently. So hopefully in, a, in two weeks or so I'll have, I'll have more for you guys. Stay tuned though. Peace out guys.